Okay, good. So, uh, welcome to this workshop. I think it's like the six or, I'm not sure how many we've done now, six or seven. So this one is based on REI. Um, so this is, this is basically translated as um, uh, blended principles or harmonizing principles. So the idea is that there's, there's underlying principles that run through both the weapon work and the taijutsu, the empty handed work, and that we're basically going to explore the relationship between them between the weapons and the empty hand and basically what is the thing what are or what are the things that underlie the art itself so uh Saito sense is kind of famous famously he, he he had this comparison it's like that if you mix judo with kendo you wouldn't get a you would not get a kind of agreement between the two and that you can't explain judo through kendo and you can't explain kendo through judo but if you take aikido's weapon system that you can explain the same principles as the relate to the taijutsu. So that basically that it means that the things that we're training in the weapons are in agreement with all the other things. Okay. And there's a few things which make the kind of Aikido special in terms of what we do. And the first one we're going to look at is, is basically hand me. So this kind of idea of a, of a, of a kind of back triangle or rear back triangle stance. And then the second one is really kind of copy. So work in copy work, which we'll explore in the second session. And then I want to explore in the last session is basically how we use the weapon work to uh, integrate into the weapon, into the, into the taijutsu. So how basically you can train the weapons to train similar qualities in the taijutsu work and vice versa as well. So they kind of interrelate in a way. So, okay, we'll just get started. So we'll just do a little bit of a warm up. So most of you know these before, but those that don't, I'm just going to start really loose with the body. And they just want you to explore an upwards direction. So keeping the feet pretty much on the floor, you can just explore coming out of the toes. Keep all the limbs nice and loose. So these are just kind of loosening exercises. You just want to explore in vertical direction with the whole body. And just explore different kind of qualities of movement. You don't always have to do the same. And you can also explore a little bit coming out from the feet. Just about kind of loosening all the limbs up a little bit. And just exploring your relationship with the ground. Sinking the weight down as you go. Okay, the next one is just side to side. Just nice, big, flexible movements. And what you're looking to do in this case is really let the spine flex. So the whole body's going to do a kind of wave motion. Okay, just keep going. A second. Ooh. Okay, keep going. That's good. Good. Nice. Next one's nice and familiar, just the rotation move. So keeping the arms nice and loose, sinking the weight into the ground as you rotate. Keep the knees nice and flexible. Okay, next one is, is a kind of inside and outside movement and you're really just looking for a wave to move through the spine. So all the way from the ground into the crown of the head, the top of the spine. Just find one big wave through the body. And again, just explore different kind of qualities of movement. You can make this really kind of small or you can really open it out nice and big, bending backwards, bending forwards. And just think about opening and then closing the body. Really focus on the center. Nice, big, flexible movements. Give it a try. That's it. That's great. Great.
Okay, good. So we're just going to look at three exercises which, which work main parts up. The first one's really for the knees, and then we work up to the hips and then the shoulders. So this first one is just about swinging the arms. And it's really about kind of releasing the knees into the ground. So have the arms up, a little bit back. And just swing through the body. Keep the weight centered in the ground. So in this case, just in this case, don't do this. Don't kind of swing forward of the knees. Keep the weight sinking down. So think of the back into the, the back of the knee and the heel. The weight's going to sink into this area. And keep the knee nice and flexible. You've got to kind of rebound as you come up. And just let the arms swing very heavy, like that kind of thick, heavy ropes. Keep the breath going. Nice. Great. Very nice. Okay. Okay, good. The next one's for the hips. So in this case, start with a neutral position, shoulder width apart. And then what you're going to do is turn from the hip and then swing the arm down. One arm comes so that the front arm comes to the shoulder and the other hand comes to the back of the spine. And then you just release it out, come to a neutral position and then go to the other side. You can do this nice and slow. Again, the key is keeping the weight down. So I don't want to kind of swing out of the ground. Keep the weight sinking down. Once you kind of get into the coordination of it, just let the arms go. So just let the arms follow the hips. Now. Back to the roof. Good. And especially in this case, just watch for a kind of, I want to kind of rotate into the body in a, in a way, kind of spiral into the body, but I don't want to twist out of the body. So in this case, just watch these kind of positions where I'm basically coming out of the body. So really think about spiraling into the ground, spiraling into the ground. So really try and stay centered. You do. That way. That's it. Uh... Good. Okay, and the last one's for the shoulders. It's going to be a bit complicated, so I'll, I'll break it down if you need to, but we'll try and do it in one. So we start in this position here, and then I basically rotate the hips out. One hand comes to the front, one hand comes to the back. And then from this position, the arms are kind of horizontal. I turn the spine again, roll the arms down, and I come to this position here. And then from here, I just continue the arms raising up to the top. And what you want to do is just swing through. So, so the body's going to drop. The arms are going to go forwards and backwards. Let's give it a try. We need, I'll just break it down a little bit. Just really think about, this is really for the shoulders to, if you think of the shoulders like a gate, you're going to kind of open the, open and close them, open and close them. Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Uh, so good. Good, good. 
And if you can with this one, you can also do both directions. So you can basically turn now, rather than this hand coming forward, the other hand comes forward. You basically just turn, change the direction. Great. Okay, super. So just take a bucket. We're going to go into a little bit of Suburi work. So what we normally do is kind of run through the Suburi or, or run through a kind of weapon system today. What we're going to do is kind of go in and out of the weapon. So we'll, we'll kind of come into Taijutsu, into kind of uh, just empty handed work from the bucket. So the first thing, just start with the Kamai. So just really coming from a, from a nice neutral position. These are the kind of heels of heels of uh, touching the toes kind of point out swords just rested on the left and then just come forward with the right yeah and just come into the kamai and then just dropping it back so just take it nice and slow center the body and come into a really kind of comfortable kamai nice clear extension and really with a sense of triangulating the body so really coming into a handy position with the hips Nice and relaxed. Okay, just a few like this, nice and slow. Good. Great, good. Okay, so coming from this position, just coming into the first saburi. So nice and slow, bringing the foot up, really finding the back, and then drawing down, finding the cuff. Reaching the back, and finding the cuff. This is a nice, big, clear movement. Just trying to coordinate the hands and the feet. Okay, good. So we're just going to explore the first direction is, is basically this vertical. So it's kind of what we looked at when we started this. What I want you to explore is really a sense of grounding the movement. So the tendency with this cut is to come forward into the move this way and be pulled forward. So I want you just to explore now, find the back and just cut through with the body. So I really want you to find, a set, the, find the center of the movement. So you're going to find the back nice and clearly and then just drop through the cut. You can also release with the right hand. The important thing right now is really to feel the body grounding. Feel the body grounding. And you're gonna rotate the body into a into a triangle. So this front hip is really gonna come forward. Come forward. But try not to come for, push forward with the upper body. So really allow the movement to come from the hips this way. So just forget the cut for the moment and just slide through or slice through it. You're basically gonna release through it this way, all the way into the ground. And you should really feel comfortable right in the middle of your posture. Yeah, just try a few like this.
So as well as thinking of the down direction, at the same time, you've got the opposite, which is to, is to, to think about the up direction. So the easiest way to think about this is extension through the spine and through the through the through the crown of the head. So I want you to really use this this first position. So what we tend to do is rush this first position and come into the cut. And when basically I'm working already out, out of balance where the extension's cut out. So what I want you to really feel is coming into a sense of extension with the body here. So the body's really gonna kind of kind of like a vertical column all the way through the spine. And then from here, what I want you to do is try and maintain this extension through the cut. You can also do this just with the slice through, but I really have a sense that this, this extension is maintained. What I don't start working in is crunching the upper body in these kind of movements. So I can establish a downwards direction, but have no sense of no sense of extension up. So really allow this the spine, the vertebra to really extend up. Now really try and maintain it all the way through the movement. So all the time, the spine has a sense of extension. Find the back, find the ground. And right now, just really exploring this vertical uh, direction. Just imagine there's a kind of string being pulled up all the way through the spine. So there's a kind of gentle extension, not a sense of, of pulling up, but just being supported. That's it. Yeah, good. That's it. Okay, good. There we go, good. Okay, now bring in, in the focus again. So find the back and find the cut down. Now try again, keep a sense of the ground and the extension of the spine. And now try and basically center it, center the body and allow the cut to extend out. So I really want to feel it extending out, reaching out. But I want the body to be really centered and grounded. Yeah. And I don't want the cut to basically pull me out of the body. So have the feeling almost it's like the hips hit the ground this way. So it's like you hit the ground with the hips whilst maintaining a sense of extension all the way through the spine. And just take your time a little bit after the cut. One, two seconds, just really feel the position. So we're now really looking at the, this front back direction. So in a sense, you're looking at extension out. The, the key thing in this is that I don't push the sword out and, and be in this kind of position or throw the body forward in this case. Really, in a sense, what you want to do is match the, uh, is you want to source the movement from the back. So again, this, this movement's a really nice movement to, to really find this, find this feeling. So what I do is really find the back with the sword. And now here, keeping this sense of the back, pressing through from the back this way. What I don't want to do is start the movement in the front and allow the, allow the sword to really pull, pull me out. So really have a sense of finding the back and then motivating the movement from the back. So you feel the whole back of the body presses forward rather than the front of the body being pulled by the sword. So again, have the sense that the sword's being directed by the body from the back. This way. This way. So really now get a sense of the fullness in the front but it's matched by the kind of equal feeling or it's actually motivated by the back, this kind of movement. And when we're going to kind of cocky work with the handwork, this is the same kind of feeling. 
So this kind of feeling and this kind of feeling with the sword. Just try and feel now the backwards direction. Yeah, good. Very good. Nice. Okay, good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna explore now just the body work. So what I want you to do is make a really a comparison now between this kind of feeling we make in the cut and this position we find when we do Tainahenko, this position here. So there's this, this movement described in terms of Tainahenko work this way is described as finding the cut. So the, the same feeling of the sword work is the same. So one of the things with the rear is that the, the, there's a relationship between the two, but they're, they're not direct. So it's, it's this idea is that the, the Relationship is close, but not too, not too close. So it's not that I make identical movements. So it's not that we do kind of sword work movements with, with the arms, but we start to kind of round the movements out with the handwork. So I want you to just explore now the sense of the sword work now in the Tiny Henko. So you're gonna find the same movements with the body, bring the foot up, bring the hands up, and then sink forward, find the ground here. And the same feeling you want in the body here. So find this position here, nice and straight vertical, keeping the extension and then sink the body in this way. So normally you kind of find a rotation with this hand angle position, but just for now, just find it from a static position. Sink into the ground and here, and keeping the same feeling of impacting with the hips. So I want the hand work to basically be a translation of the hips this way. So just play now with this, reaching up and sinking down, just that position. And see if you can access, basically the feeling's the same, but the position is different. The arm work is now different. Okay, good. So look a little bit at the arm position. There's a, there's kind of two tendencies in this in this case. One of them, one of them is to close the elbows in and be in this position where they're basically tied to the body. And this is kind of directly. This is this is too close to kind of the bottom work or, or basically. If my tendency is to use the bokken in a way that's kind of tight in the front, I will tend to get this kind of position in the Tiny Henko work. Okay, so, and the other way is, is, is being really wide of the, of the movement, or in some cases kind of turning the arms out, or these kind of things. Really look for the position, in this case, of the elbow and the hip, to in this kind of position. This kind of position. But I'm not coming into either that, or something like this, I'm basically spreading out. So I don't want to, I don't want to narrow the body down. I don't want to diffuse the body out. So feel free go back into the go back into the saburi, find this position, this position, this position, which translates into this position, this way. So it's not the same, but the feeling's the same. So just try and find the really the right comfortable position. You want full extension. But you should feel nice and comfortable through it. Uh, so. Nice. Good. 
Great. Okay, good. So there's one tendency which which is is in one sense it's automatic, but sometimes it's actually it's consciously trained in in, in other systems. So in one sense, if we're training actually sword uh, Bokken work for sword work, in a sense sometimes you'll see a cut where this like the tip leads. So in a sense, what you've got is a, really a slicing movement with the sword. So you'll see this in 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 kendo, in iaido, and in other kind of sword systems. Because we're not really training the Bokken work for sword work, we're training it for body work specifically what i'm really training is something else i'm training a sensation of hitting with the body so i'm training a kind of impact percussion movement with the body which is basically training the center first and not the hand so there's a tendency in this case also with the tiny henko which is also automatic is to go hand first and then find the body hand first and then find the body and the same with the cut tip first and then find the body so just get a sensation that i'm actually training as something else which is training the center of the body out so okay, I'll stick to this is true of all this is true of all the techniques when we're when we're doing them. What I want is a sensation of the body creating the movement, not the hand creating the movement and then pressing through with the body. So what I'm trying to train consciously in this case is a sense of the body finding the rotation and pressing through. Yeah. Okay, then. <laughs> so you're gonna train train have it have really a sensation you want the whole body to initiate the movement and then this which basically means I'm working the center of the body first. So it's basically center over periphery in this case, like this. Okay, just, just play with it. You can also train, play with both sides, also left and right side, if you're not. Just get this feeling that I'm basically prioritizing the body over the, the body over the sword in this case. That's it. That's it, good. Nice, nice. Great, great. Okay, good. So we'll just move into Zengo Giddy. So cutting front and back. Start by just finding the back, cutting down, and then from here, just rotate into the back and cutting on the left side. Each time, just rotate underneath the sword and coming down. Yeah. Now, in this case, you don't need to find the back. There is a variation where you can come and find the back, but in this case, just find the top of the head or the front of the head, just here and apply the hip down. Apply the hip down. Again, just do it nice and slow, really consciously grounding the cut each time. Okay, good. So all the points still relate with the with in terms of the cutting work, in terms of finding the position. What I want to really focus on is in this sense is the rotation movement. So I want you to really focus on this connection now here in this movement. So really the key thing in these kind of rotations, we do all these kind of rotations and raising the arms a lot. The tendency again is to start in the arms. And this basically is pulling the body out of the ground. So what I want you to do is the sensation is straining the body down and work with a spiral through the body. So I'm basically grounding a spiral here. So think about raising the sword through the body and not lifting the sword. These are basically two, two different ways of using the sword. I basically lift it, or I have the sensation of being underneath the sword and raising it this way, this way. And this, the direct relation to this in terms of taijutsu work is when we do marotodori. So the sensation in this case is sinking and raising. 
Okay, but not of lifting the arm like this, which is basically pulls me out of the body, if you, even if I can do it. So really get the sensation in the sword work of sinking and raising the arm. Yeah. So at the same time as the arm's raising, I want the body to be draining down. There's a simple one for this. It's like hand goes up, the body goes down. So hand up, you go down. Hand up, you go down. And this is the same motion, this into this. Yeah. But it's a slightly different, um, the application slightly different. But the set, the feeling's the same again. So just play with it. And again, you can just play with empty handed work if you like. Just play with finding this. And you want this sinking, sinking feeling. Bam, down. So again, you're working with spirals from the ground. Okay, good. That's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 good. Okay, good. So we're going to shift now into a yokome movement and just make it as simple as possible. So in this case, one side forward, you're just going to do this on the spot. So one foot comes in, you raise up to the head and then you cut down on this side. So raise into the head, cutting down just on the spot. So you basically bring the feet together. The key in this one is that this right hand finds the center of the head, finds the forehead. And then I arc the hips to find the yokome. This way, this way, this. Then just take this nice and light, just working on the spot. So now you've got a slight diagonal with the with the cutting motion. That's it. Okay, good. And again, really taking the focus into the hip work. This is where the, where the translation comes out of it is, is coming into this kind of cocky work here. So what I, what I want really in this case is for the hand to be following the hip. So in this case of training the sword work like this, what I, what I don't want to happen is the arms again leading the body, or the arms leading the body. And in this case, specifically with the Yoko Minuchi, that the arms don't create the angle. So this is true for our other cuts, maybe in, in different styles where we're looking at kind of Kesagiri, this kind of stuff. In terms of this yokoman, I want to really center the cut on the body through the, through the spine and allow the hip to arc out. So again, it's really allowing the hips to make the change, find in the center and then cutting down. And trying not in this case to allow the sword, basically making the rotation in the sword work. So try and see if you can find the center and change the hip basically. So now we're working with a sense of the hips being a little bit more open than before in the, in the show Manucci where the hips are a little bit more flat this way. And now you're working in a slightly more open position with the hip. So you're slightly more opened out with the back hip, especially. So finding the feet and finding the cut this way. So again, just really prioritizing the hip work over the handwork. Okay, just give it a try. That's that's it, that's it, that's it. Nice. Oh no, I muted them. Oops. Oh, 
perasaan kan. Hmm. Oh no. Oh. Okay, good. Good. Okay, now watch this. Don't in this case, we're going to go into this kind of motion with the with the handwork. So this is really looking at uh, passing a spiral through the handwork. So in this case of the Yokwin's really working a spiral spiral movement in that I'm not doing this. I'm not just pressing this. I'm not just passing the sword up and down, but I'm allowing the sword to really uh, I'm allowing the hip to transmit into the into the sword. So I'm allowing this kind of thing to happen with the hips up. Just play with slightly loosening the movement out a little bit this way. This way. So don't think you necessarily have to stick on the spot or you have to kind of stick to the front angle, but just get a sensation that from the from the hip to the tip of the sword, there's a sensation of passing a spiral through the sword. If you can't think in terms of a spiral, just think in terms of a circular movement. So I want the tip of the sword to travel on a circular path. You can also really just open the cutout where you just forget the cut. But again, really focusing on the hip work and really focusing on a spiral coming through the body this way without this kind of thing. So this is kind of working linearly. And what I want now is really moving to a spiral like this. Yeah, so just slightly open the form out a little bit. You've got to slightly experiment. This is sometimes where the saburi can be a bit of a trap. That's it. Good, 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 that's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 good, 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 good. There we go, great. So again, just going back to handwork, so without the sword, just using the same kind of pattern of movement, so bringing the foot and rolling through here. So now again, the, the translation is not direct, so you're not going to kind of be using the hands this way, but what you're going to be using is rounding the movement out with the hand, and you're going to come into this position. So before again, we were looking at this, this kind of henko position where the hips are kind of in a, in a flat position like this. <laughs> now what you're going to do is open this out here. So the back hips more open and the hands are now spreading here. Working now with Tegatana, with Kokiwood. So just play with this again, transmitting a spiral through the hand. Spiral through the hand. In this case, just drop the arms down and then find the movement. So this helps you find the movement a bit, a bit more. So drop the arms down, come into a kind of neutral position, and then just coil through, find the hips. Coil through, find the hips. This way. Okay. Just explore. Again, the same feeling with us. You've got to make a slight translation between the way the arms use the sword and how you use the hands.
So in the next session, we're going to look at cocky work a bit more in depth, but we're just going to end with this, this exercise. So this has three kind of stages to it. This is basically translating the sword work position directly into cocky work. So what you're going to do in this case is, it's again, it's a bit like the first sabri. You just raise the hands up really like you've got the sword in and then cutting down, finding this position here. And what I'm working on now is really a sensation of, of spiraling through the hands this. So you've got a really a sense of the flexibility in the wrist, dropping in, dropping in, dropping in. So you start like this here. And then what you do is open the hands out. So you're in this position, open out, open out, open out, open out, open out like this. So now looking for the width in the arms a little bit more this way. And then from here, you just go straight into this, this. So now it's really rounding the movement out this way, this way. Yeah. So just work through these three kind of levels. Basically, they are the hands are together, following the center line, looking at flexibility in the wrist, and then playing with separating, 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 and then just playing with coiling. Coiling. Coiling this way. And you can also do this left side, right side. Just play with it a little bit. basically trying to make the feeling of the sword which is quite sharp quite pretty linear and trying to open it out a little bit more for the to be able to apply to the handwork to the body work there we go good Great. Okay, great. So we'll take a quick break, take us 10 minutes or so, and then we'll start again at 10. So this is just about building a kind of base with which to work on. A lot of the movements we work with in terms of hand me, cocky work, these all are directly related or actually come from the sword work. So the, the, the origin of these movements is in, is in sword work. So in, in a sense, this forms the basis of how to kind of understand the system. Yeah, and then we'll basically explore a little bit more into more complicated movements so in the next class. Okay, any questions so far? If you've got any, you can write them or, or just, just uh, say, uh, tell me. Good, okay. bow out. Hi, hi, so much. Good, good. Take a quick break. Good. So again, looking at whole body movement. Come into here, here, here. Now again, really the tendency is to go into the arms first, start. Get this feeling that the hips, everything's going to initiate this movement forward. So what I want is a feeling of the whole body pressing forward and finding the cut this way. And again, not the arms kind of starting and then the body kind of following this way. So almost a feeling the body presses the sword out. This, 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 this way. So just try and get this feeling of coordinating again around the center. So whole body movement comes here. One, two, three, like this. Okay, just a few more. And we'll slightly add to it.
Okay, so we just complete this movement now. Show from the side. Yeah. 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 Slice in this way. And now from this position, you're going to take the back leg in. And I'm going to find this position with the sword. So it's coming up into a high position. Arms raised and into a block here. Movement five, just like this. Okay. And from this position, all I want you to do is return back into Kamai. This way. That's into six. So six movements. And it's now like this. One. Three, slide into the back. Four with the Yorkman. And now stepping in from the back leg. Up, finding this position. The hand's just on the edge of the back of the sword. <coughs> Coming in, finding the Kamai. And you basically start the pattern again. Continue. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Just drawing back into Kamai. Okay, give it a try. Just a six count set. Okay, good. So one detail on the handwork, when you find this last position, stepping in this way. So I want, in this case, the hand to be this way on the sword. In this case, I don't want the, sword, the hand to be this way. This is possible, but it's using the sword for a different movement, usually using for a, for a thrust or a kind of stabbing movement. So in this case, this is using the sword really as a block and finding this position. The key in this part is the elbow down, nice and heavy. Again, trying to find the back of the movement. And then from here, just releasing it and coming into the kamai. So as you find the rotation, let the hand just slide down this way. Yeah. And then come into the kamai. This way. And then it's like this. Yeah. Just try a few. Right. Okay, good. So we spent a little bit of time on Tan Henko. The, the other big movement for us is uh, Maroto Dori Kokiho. So we're just going to do a partner. So, so with the Maroto Dori, again, the key is working with extension and spirals and draining the body. The feelings to sink the body in and find this position here. And then from here, spiraling into the back this way. Okay. So the key in all of these movements is dropping and working with spirals through the hands. This and this, okay? The moment I work with any kind of linear force, just get stopped. So I work with a linear force just straight back into his power. So what I need to do is work with spirals, which basically take his structure away from him this way. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. So we're just gonna work now with Tiny Henko, just solo, and just get the sensation of the sword work being present, spiraling in, and then from here, a sense of raising the sword and drawing the hips down, okay? So just take this nice and slow, just in a few steps, rolling in, raising up, yeah, and finding this spiral here. Okay, just a few, just solo. Cook you hope. There we go.
Okay, so just taking a little bit, uh, again, it's kind of based on the, the, the cocky work, the sword work. What, uh, what you need to do now is start to, again, make this, this whole part of the, uh, the arm really flexible. So from the elbow into the forearm, the wrist into the hand, there's, a, there's really a feeling of flexibility. So if you're thinking about spiral work, I really need this part of the, the system to be very loose this way. And I can't work with it in a sense of where it's rigid like this. So just have a sense in this case of these two spirals, the first one is here, and then the second one is here. But in really allowing the arm to really find these kind of spiral movements. This, and then from here, this, this way. And the moment I start to use the, the joint as a kind of block, I start to come into these kind of positions, like this. And it's a bit like using the sword in this kind of way, like using the sword like this. But I want to use the sword in a sense of a, in, a, in a flexible way. So in a sense, you're using these spiral movements that we did before. These kind of movements, these ski movements, these slicing movements. And I want to translate that into something that's a lot more so. Okay, let's try it. Just a few. Just trying to maintain the feeling of the sword work and trying to find the layer, something a lot more circular in the body work. Yeah. Super. That's it. There we go. Okay, so we're going to train this as a set as well. So you've got Taina Henko, Moro Tadori, Koki Ho, and then into a, into a movement which uses a full Koku, Koku movement. So you're going to start here, just come into the Taina Henko, back here. And now from here, bring in the back, front leg back here. Now here, finding the Moro Tadori, in to the back. And then from here, swing the back leg in and find a full Koku position here. And then from this position, just change sides. So show the full set, it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So again, just focusing on cocky work spirals. Just tiny hinko, back, murotodori, cocky ho. Find this big cocky position, and then just dropping, changing sides this way. Yeah, it's a kind of six movement set, both sides.
Super. Okay, good. So we're going to look at one technique, also obviously solo, but uh, I'm going to just show you. It's the clearest technique we've got, which relates directly to the sword. So Shiho Nage is coming to the side here and rolling up with the ball. And then here, obviously, cutting down to the ground this way. So Shiho Nage is really a classic technique for teaching the application of sword work into the body. But again, obviously, you're rounding everything off. Everything's coming a bit more clear. So the key points in, in, in this work is again not working with the hands and kind of pressing out here and finding these kind of positions. So again, it's really working with cocu and working with spirals through the body and finding the motion here like this. Okay. So we're gonna just look at this basic. Really, it's rooted in sword work. So really, a nice basic exercise for this is just to bring the back leg through, raise and cut down. So it's not a position, it's not a movement we're kind of familiar with. It's not really in the Saburi, but I just wanted to practice from the back, raise, cutting down this way. Back, raise, cutting down. And I really want the feeling again of spiraling into the ground and then applying the hip down. So it's a nice, simple technique. But I want you to just have this sensation of spiraling into the ground. Really think in terms of Shiho Nage. Um, okay. Uh, good. Okay, I'm going to try and show that um, one of the problems right now is the sens sensation of okay. coming in, raising, turning, and then coming in. So basically compart compartmentalizing the technique a little bit. So I show you, sometimes this comes from Shihanagi. The sensation you got there, I just want to come in here. This sensation of coming through here, turning, and then pulling down. It basically breaks all the movement down. Try and think in terms of the Shihonai, you want one spiral which runs through this position, this position. So this actual movement is just one motion. But in a sense, it's not to one, boom, boom. It's not kind of split up in this way. So I think that the, the technique is actually coming here, spiraling into this position this way. So basically that translates 
from the sword work into this position here. I'm basically going to coil through that movement, but I'm not going to do this, this, this. Yeah, so really get a sensation from the sword work. You're going to spiral into the ground this way. Yeah, so get a sensation of this and then cutting down this way. Yeah, so again, just slightly open the movement out a little bit. The sword work's really kind of condensed and the body works, again, it's a lot more, it's a lot bigger, it's a rounder movement. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. There we go. Hmm. That's it. Good. Okay, good. Okay, Oscar. So you've got Shihanagi, you've got you've got a mote technique and you've got Ruo technique. So you come into the front this way. Yeah. And in this case, you've also got an uh, Ura technique, which spirals around to the back and then cuts in here, like this way. Okay. So in this case, with the sword work, they're kind of tricky movement to do so. What you're going to do is just rotate from the backside and cut down this way. Just try this one side, or you can do both, but just do a few on one side first. So now the sensation is to coil to the back and cut down this way. Okay. You coil to the back, cut down this way. Okay, just try to. So this is a big rotation right to your back. Again, think in terms of Shihonage, Ruda Waza. Not so yet. This is a front foot ten cam. Yeah, in this case, just watch it. So some of you are doing this from the back foot, so it's it's okay. You can do it. Some of you are kind of doing this move. Have the feeling you just rotate from the front, so that the front foot rotates in this way. So the the movement again from the from the empty handed, from here I just bring the back leg in this way and rotate out the back this way. So the feelings to do this. So the feelings to come here and rotate out the back and then cut out this way. Yeah. So just look for this is basically a direct rotation front side and then cutting down this way. Yeah, just try a few more. Uh, okay, good. There we go. That's it, that's it, that's it. Michael, yeah. what about left and right side? Yeah, you can do this. It's the yeah. same. So you can do if the right the right legs forward just come in here this way, and then the left legs forward just come in here this way. Okay, thanks. That's, yeah, you can do both both sides of it. Yeah, good. Nice.
Good. Okay, we're just going to slightly open this movement out now with the bokken. Is that in a slicing movement? So from the beginning, slicing out to the side. Again, you're going to make now this movement out. Now from here, you can make the, the, the kind of uh, omote waza coming through to the back, or you can introduce the ura coming here all the way through and slicing to the back this way. So just play with this. You're basically going to start, just do this from the right side. Just makes coordination easy for the, for the handwork in the sword. So slicing out the side and then just finding the second movement. Like a shiho nageka. Slice out to the side and then find the movement to the rear. So it's just trying to really ground these rotations. Slicing out. Stepping through, good. There we go, good. There we go. Nice, nice, good. Okay, good. good. Also, one of the great things of the, the sword work and the, all the weapons work <clears throat> is that you can also use it in a way to train train through the levels in the in the in the system that we've got. So, working from a basic kind of static level to more flexible training, and then to full movement training. So, we'll just do one to end. Is basically working this movement by opening it out. So now, what you can do is make this slash rather than to the side. You're going to enter into it and find this movement here. So now you're going to make a really big movement in rotate through and then from here again you can just find the front variation yeah or you can find the variation to the rear this way and it's basically starting to now open out the movement so just play now with opening these spirals out this way to here so a lot more fluid now and looking at the quality of, of fluidity Into the board this way. Yeah. Just give it a try. Just open this movement out. That's... Good. Okay, good. So I just show you, so you've got a kind of reference for it in, in terms of this work with the Shihonagi, working through the level. So, so you've got a static way, which is kind of coming to the positions, finding the movement, coming through and drawing into the ground. Now, in terms of what you're doing in this case, you're really leading up much more flexibly. So now the movement's really got a sense of grounded do it this way and what i'm looking for is the same kind of quality in the sword work so i go from a movement where i'm really kind of working on pauses solidity grounding and then i want to kind of inform that practice into a way where i'm looking at something a lot more flexible now so just play within the levels with the sword you've got a static movement and you've got a sense now of really flexibility 
through the whole system this way. Yeah, so just play within these kind of basic levels and then see if you can go into a, something a little bit more flexible. That's it. And just again, just explore the movement, open it out. last couple of minutes with the sword just play with any cut or any kind of movement with the sword cutting thrusting slicing movements knees out to the side rolling underneath and just again just play with it on a really basic level cutting out and down and just play with any kind of movement you like any kind of thrust any kind of slice and really just working on the sensation of whole body movement and pressing transmitting spirals out from the from the body just play with it nice easy movement and just play with anything you like nice and freely okay give it a try Great. Okay, good. So we'll stop there. So we'll take another again ten minutes, and then we'll come back at eleven, and then uh, we'll we'll start here. We're going to do the next session on on Joe work. So. Uh, the next session, we're going to work on this this idea again of, of, of how to translate basically the weapons training into into solo work. So basically, training a quality in terms of the weapon work and how it how you can translate it into the empty-handed work. So we'll bow. We're going to basically use the Joe uh, in this class, last class, basically to look at the idea of training a quality in the body. So in this case, we're going to look at this this transition between basic to a flexible way of training with the weapon. So basically looking at the quality in, in Japanese, we call Yowarakai. 
So in this case, we're just going to start with a little bit of rotated movements with the Joe. So just nice and simple to start. Real basic, just letting the whole forearm, wrist, hand rotate through the Joe. So just one sided. Let's adjust my camera. It's a little bit bright. And in this case, just change hands freely. So a few each side. Good. And then just alternating the hands. So you're basically going to pass the Joe, finger, little fingers together, and then turn it. Fingers together, turn it. Again, just really trying to promote some flexibility in the joint, especially the forearm and the wrist. The body nice and stable. Just letting the Joe spin. So one thing also that Joe's got to train is transitions in the hands up. You're going to train in a slightly extra rotation now. So normally do this and, and change it this way. What you do is allow the hand to rotate over this way. So basically the Joe's coming up over the little finger this way. Okay, and with this hand, what you're going to do is kind of basically slide it down the hand and change it this way. So as it comes over, this hand's basically going to go like cut into the Joe this way. Cut into the Joe this way. It's going to take the Joe over the top and basically roll it through this way. This way. And really, there's a sensation of kind of cutting across into the jaw. Cutting across into it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And again, I want to create something that's kind of flexible through the joint. Good. <laughs> and if you lose the jaw, it's totally fine. That's it. There we go. Good. Okay, good. Now this is basically working the other other rotation. You're going to release the Joe towards the thumb side. So you're going to release it towards the thumb. And now the hand comes underneath this way. This way underneath. So it's like this, this, this. And again, I want to create something that's kind of flexible with the Joe, with the handwork. Release it and come through. Release it and come through. In this case, it's going to release towards the thumb. Towards the thumb, release. Release. So there's kind of a moment where the Joe's a little bit loose. And I'm going to do it by bringing the whole body in towards the Joe. The whole body comes in. That's it. Good. Very nice. And then just playing with these two rotations, you basically know how to pass it over both ways. So you do this, 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 this. Once you've got the coordination for it, 
just see if you can Im basically involve the whole body to it. So this is quite easy to kind of just do with the hands. Basically this way, basically revolving around it. Think of the application into the taijutsu, into the, the body work that we do. I want to start to kind of involve the whole body in the movement. So try and get the hips, the center of the body, everything's kind of rolling through it, rolling through it. So there's really this kind of soft quality in the body. And you can also do this both ways. So taking the jaw one way and taking it the other way. That's it. That's it. Got it? No? <laughs> Got it, Ella? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to spotlight you for pressure. <laughs> ah, good. 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 And we just got to really simple work, just working now with a figure of eight motion through the body. In this case, have one foot forward, so the right, the same foot, same hand. And what I want to really now get is a sense of the hips press into the hand. Again, this is very easy to do, just the arm, in a sense like this, the, the kind of centers fix, everything's down. Have a sense of working something a little bit more flexible. So the body, the whole body's involved in the motion. All the joints nice and free, body's nice and grounded, heavy. And again, just change in sides, just change freely. So <clears throat> keep the left, same foot and same hand in front. Let's work something flexible. And now just going to transition in the hand. So you're just going to change the foot, change the hand, change the foot, change the hand. And now really being aware of the feet compressing into the ground. Again, kind of very easy to do in a sense, kind of on the ground, but I want to have a sensation of the body kind of entering into the ground, entering into the ground. Just slightly open the movement out. Really using the lower body to generate the movement. That's that, 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 that. That's Right. Very nice. Good. Okay, now what you're going to do is have the right hand on the Joe, but the left leg forward, so you're going opposite. And now in this case, what we've just done is this forward rotation. So this forward rotation. Now what you can do is take the Joe back. So you're going to allow the, the hand to do this motion. So it's going to now, the, the, the top of the Joe is going to come back towards you this way, and then roll it out this way. And in this case, doing this across the body. You've got left hand, the right hand on the Joe, left hand forward. Uh, left leg forward. And again, just trying to create something, a flexible connection between the hips and the hand. That's good. And again, just changing sides. Left leg, right hand, 
or left hand, right leg. Um. So this is very easy to actually go into the, the wrong, the, the, this rotation. So this kind of rotation, which we're used to, but really in this case, try and get us this, this rotation. So the arms not now, not, not now doing this, it's doing this. Okay. So it's the opposite way. So you've got this standard way, this way, and now you've got to reverse it this way. Yeah. So you're working these two, two different rotations this way. And then if you've got it, just go to transition in the hands. Stop. 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 Okay, okay, good. Uh -huh. So, Ouch. <laughs> okay, and play with this a little bit freely now. You've got to try and bring these rotations now into it. So these kind of transitions, I want you now to try and introduce these into it. So rolling over this way. So again, slightly opening the movements out. You can take the jaw however you like. So there's lots of ways to do this. You can do the reverse direction. You can just have the sense of following the jaw. You can even transition behind the body. Just have the sensation of again, connecting the whole body into the movement. Open the lower body up a lot. So start to really include the lower body into the movement. This way. You play with big rotations. That's it. There we go. Good, 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 good. Great. Okay, good. So we're going to look at this again, this transition or, or this training of a quality. So in this case, we're going to make this transition from the, from a basic static move into this slightly more flexible Yawarakai stage. So what we're going to do is start with a really basic movement starting from Skikamai. I'm just going to go into like the fifth Saburi. So a thrust in, a roll up, and a strike down with the right side. So it's a Ski Jodan Gaishi. And so Ski on the left. Roll the body up, hands above the head, and then just releasing it forward into a forward strike on the right side. So just keep it very clear. And I really want to use the pauses. Really find the center of the body and initiate from the center. So just try this three movement. It's in one, two, and three.
Okay, good. So in this case, there's a, there's a tendency in, in terms of the rotation where as you come into the, the this move to kind of bob the body up and then come down with it. So we're going to introduce a kind of stage between this. So I want you to come here, here, and then from here, just rotate into the into the stick this way. And the key is keep the body down, keep the elbows down this way. And then from this position, just see if you can apply the hip forward this way. So I just want the sensation of staying with the ground, coming to this position, rotating and keeping the body low. So the weight's underneath. And then from here, it's like dragging the jerk through the movement this way. So just introduce this step. I usually teach this really for beginners, but in, in a sense, this is a really good method for really training the body to drain down and just connect the hip into the, into the swing this way. Just try that, nice basic. That's it. Nice. Yeah, and just keeping now that same feeling as you come through here, hip, find the hands. So again, it's just about trying to trying trying to motivate the movement from the center. This is again very easy to go into the hands and find this position. So now try and get this position the hip rolls in and then the hands follow it. Yeah, so just bringing it back into the basic saburi. One, two, three. And just initiating from the center down. And the key point in this, in terms of practicing with pauses, is, is this quality of training uh, from stillness into movement directly. So making this transition of being calm and straight away into movement. Calm, straight away into movement. Still movement. So it's really trying to train this kind of quality. Rather than seeing these as kind of stops, kind of stop, and kind of just stop. But see this really as a, as a, as a kind of a way to train an ability to just move. So it's actually a movement training, although it looks like it's a kind of static training. The ability to just move from a position is what you're training. So again, just a few more, and just really with this kind of quality. Stillness, movement. Stillness, movement. Still, movement. And I'm really trying to, trying to minimize all these extra movements which take away from that quality. Yes. Okay, we'll start working with this flexible stage, which really means not speeding up the basic, but actually rounding off the corners and, 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 and making it much softer. So now you're gonna look at this movement. I'm still gonna draw the body back, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the body forward through the strike. So this is basically blending the second and third movements together. Come in here, roll the body back, but pressing forward at the same time. 
So I want to really create a sense of flexibility through the system. So in, back, but roll through at the same time. Okay, so just try this. So you still keep to the basic pattern of, of drawing the body back and then pressing forward, but you make it much more circular now. So you're really looking for a quality of a kind of wave through the system. Yeah, so just look for this. Let's play with it a little bit. Very good. Okay, good. And now what you can do is, is kind of go straight into two movements. So this is where you take it into a higher guy. So it's where the movement starts to really become much more circular. So it's here and then here, straight in down. So there's now no sense of pulling back and, and, and pressing in. You just have a position of here and then pressing straight in, finding this. Now the key in this again, this is a this is a this is a, uh, a different take on the basics. So it's not in a case that I'm doing this kind of in a basic way. It's really a sense that you're really creating a sense of circularity through the movement. So the whole movement starts to follow the hip work. There's a sense of coiling through the hip this way. Yeah, just give it a try. So ski, hayegaishi, just two movements. That's. That's. Okay. You spend a couple of minutes just playing with these levels so you've got a static version through through this way you've got a flexible version this way and you've got a full fluid version this way yeah. so just play with these levels and just kind of drop down change them mix them in or just practice one these kind of these three ways of training the weapon work or all the saburi you can do like this. This is just one example. Yeah. And just play with them. Static, flexible, and fluid levels. And at the same time as you're training differences in the form, you're also training different qualities of movement.
Uh, so each one should feel totally different, even though you're doing very similar movements. The feeling's different. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, good. So we're going to move, get into a little bit of Taijutsu work, obviously solo, but again, we'll look at an Ikkyo. So really basic. I'll just show you. We're going to work in level. So the first level, very static. Come into the side. Drawing up. Pressing down. Stepping through. So really basic positions with this. And again, looking for the same kind of qualities with the Joa. Come into a position. Stillness. Come into a position still. Come into position. Yeah. Thank you. So we're just going to use, you can use a Bokken or a Joe depending on your space. It might be easier if you're in a small space, use a Bokken. Um, and what you can do is just run through these movements. So just take the weapon in the front hand and the front foot forward. You're going to slide out to the side. Take the hand with the, with the opposite hand. Take the Joe. And then you're going to roll up to this position here. Draw the arms down with the hips and then taking a big step through here. This way. This left side, right side, or just stick to one side. Just roll across. Yeah. Rolling up, finding the extension, drawing the hips. So just one. Right side, left side. Okay, good. So again, this is about kind of training a kind of quality. So not just training movements, but tra training a specific kind of quality. And again, this the quality from the basic training that you can really train well is the sense of stillness into motion. Now, if my basic training, in a sense, isn't really basic, doesn't really involve those kind of pauses, then then I'm I'm losing that ability to train that. It's not impossible to access that feeling, but it's very difficult. So. What, what I want you to do is, again, just try and, try and have the feeling of accessing this sense of coming into stillness, which means I'm grounded and then I can just come into the next movement. Just come into the next movement. And this same kind of quality, again, with the 
with the taijutsu work. It's very easy to kind of um, muddy, kind of muddy the form. And I start to go into this kind of training. So my basic becomes a kind of a mix between flexible and, and static. But I really want my basic static training to be static. So really coming into these positions. This. And then I can really access this, or it makes, it makes the training much easier to find this quality from. I mean, here, the whole body. The whole body. The whole body. Into this way. Yeah. So it's really trying, in a way, trying to clarify this, this, the levels in the system that we've got very clear and, and trying to train, train that kind of quality because it gives you the easiest access into it. Okay. So the same with this, just, just trying to really get a sense of the move one, two through this way yeah. but it can seem quite static quite rigid but if you train it in the right way you can train this kind of quality which is which is directly leading straight into movement it makes this transition much easier that's it nice great Okay, good. So now if we go into this kind of Yorayakai level, this kind of flexible state, it starts, you, the, 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 the key to this is the sense of constantly pressing movement through the, the, through the weapon. So in, in a sense, you keep the basic pattern, but you just round the edges off. So you make everything smooth and more flexible. So there's a quality of uh, uh, el elasticity in the movement. So I basically keep the basic pattern, but I just make it a lot more flexible. And it's the same in the in the taijutsu i have the same basic pattern and working from a static position but i make the movement now more fluid yeah. or flexible the right word's flexible so again working from a static position yeah. so the key to this work when you're doing solo work is again keeping the center pressing center presses center presses and center presses so you basically just make everything fluid. So again, it's not about speeding the basic up, which creates a kind of rigidity. It's about really rounding the edges off the movement. Yeah. So just play with that. So the basic ikkyo form, now in a kind of yawarakai level. That's, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Nice. 
So as we start to work into movement and work into flexible movement, again, it becomes, it becomes much easier to lose the center. So it becomes much easier to start the movements in the arms and basically lose the center in the movement. So just become, just be aware of it. And the best way to work this level is really slow. So it's also the same in the, in the Saburi work, but have the sensation of really slowing the movements down just so you can get a feel for maintaining the center. So obviously you want strong extension, but I also really need that to be reliant on a, on a centered and grounded body. So just in a way, slightly slow this movement down a little bit. Really notice that the body's constantly being kind of pulled out or pulled back or losing my balance or pulled out of the ground and just try and sink more, ground more, ground more, use more spiral. Yeah, so just it's a kind of, it's a way to just get more in, more inside the body. Yeah, good. That's it. Okay, good. So then if we go back in, in, into the next level, which is where you're working with a fluid form, this is where specific details change in the form usually. So in a sense, the, the last stage is keeping the basic form, making it flexible. And now the fluid form is where the, the details change. So whole movements become different. This is where I'm changing whole movements entirely. So in this case, the Kinanagari form in this way is just coming straight into a Hayagaishi. So the same applies with the with the Taijutsu form again. So the, 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 the flexible form starting from the same position, coming to here and then coming here. And as we work into Kinanagari works is where the details change. Yeah, and I'm working with different body work. So in this case, what you're doing is as he comes in, rolling to the back this way. So what you're doing is rolling now here for this position rather than out to the side. It's possible to come out to the side, but we're going to do this one. Yep. Try and train this position. Okay. So now it's really clear that I need to find a spiral through the whole body and then find this movement. Yeah. So just train now. Okay, thank you. Train this basic movement. You're basically going to start in the right side forward. But you're going to draw the body into this position here and here. Now the key thing is working with spirals. So spiraling through the body. And again, start this really slow and just work your way into it. So the whole movement has a totally different quality now. Thank you. Let me just try it. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Very nice. Okay. So sometimes Ikkyo gets a bit interpreted, gets a little bit interpreted like this as an upwards and a downwards movement with the arms. So in a way like this, but in a sense, if I, if I use this kind of motion in a, in a, in a fluid way, nothing, nothing actually happens to him. He's falling, but he shouldn't really go. <laughs> he actually just stuck into his posture because I'm not using a spiral to connect to his center. He just, he just adjusts to it. So what I need to do in this case is coil with a spiral. 
So it goes much more, rather than an up down movement, it's much more about spiraling through the body this way. Yeah? So just try now with it, when, in this case, have this sensation of really coiling through a spiral as you do it, this kind of position. And this will trap the person out of the balance, will draw them out rather than just kind of lifting and, and lowering the arm. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> so just play with the with the sword or bokken or gel and really get this sensation of spiraling through the whole body. So again, it's 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 body work and not arm work in this case. So just our last. Yeah, that's it. Huh. Good. Okay, good. Okay, Oscar. Awesome. So just play now with again, we're just going to open the moons out. So in terms of the Kina Nagari work, you've got this kind of basic coming into the uh, Amote Waza. You can also play with Ikkyo coming into an Uwe rotation. And you can also really mix these movements in big rotations, okay? or even coming into the inside. Okay, so what I want you to do is just play a little bit with the Bokken or Joe and just open these movements out. So play with bigger movements coming in. You can also play like the Urawaza coming to the back and also play with big rotations. You're, what you're doing now is basically lengthening the movements out. It's a bit like, it's a bit like slowing down a, a film. So you're going to stretch these movements out and try and maintain the sense of centered, grounded, pressing spiral through the body. So just really play with different kinds of movement and just working with the ikkyo as a base. So either the amote or the ura. But just, again, playing with nice grounded body work. That's really open. You can really play with really different angles. That's nice. yeah, good. That's 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 it.
use that kind of training where you train a certain kind of quality into the level. Basically press it through into the Pretty much it, okay? So about it, you've got any questions?